Now, the long-awaited commissioning and distribution of ambulances to each constituency tomorrow, January 6th, uh, is unlikely to happen. Uh, the National Ambulance Service has called for its postponement. Our reporter, uh, Joseph Armstrong, has been speaking to a section of the public on what they make of the current development. There have been several calls for government to distribute the ambulances to save life across the country as needless lives are being lost due to delay in transporting pregnant women in labor and patients in critical situations who seek to access health facilities. It looks like the country would have to wait a little much longer as this time around there is a plea from the National Ambulance Service to the Ministry of Health to the Presidency to postpone the January 6th commissioning and distribution of the ambulances. In the build-up to the 2016 general elections, the then-candidate Adudan Kwaku Fuadu and the NPP promised to revamp the alien national ambulance service. In fulfillment of its promise, the first batch of ambulances arrived in the country in September last year, but were parked at the state house awaiting distribution, a situation which got many stakeholders calling on the government to hasten their distribution. The final consignment arrived in December and the president gave reason why the ones which arrived earlier were not distributed and scheduled January 6 as a date for commissioning and distribution. The Minister for Special Development Initiatives who's been responsible for bringing them told me about a month, six weeks ago, that some of the ambulances were in, should she distribute it? And I said, no, she shouldn't. She should wait till they all come in. So one day we can distribute them all at the same time to all 275 constituencies. I saw myself getting into a tremendous amount of issues if you started distributing some and others didn't get it. Fortunately for us, all of them will be in by the end of this month. 160 odd are already in and the balance on the high seas will be here by the end of the month. The 300 will be there. On the 6th of January, I will commission them and then the distribution will take place simultaneously across the country. And nobody but National Ambulance Service has recommended a postponement to January 28. A letter written and signed by the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Ahmed Zakaria, indicated that a number of preparatory activities which should have been completed prior to the commissioning and distribution of the ambulances are behind schedule. They include lack of training for staff and paramedics on the use of ambulances and medical equipment. The new date scheduled for the training is from January 13 to 20. Another reason for the request for postponement is the digitization of the ICT dispatch system which will allow the routine of course through a computer system which will automatically generate the digital address location of the caller to enable control center easily determine the nearest ambulance to dispatch. According to the ambulance service, tracking devices which are being installed in the ambulances to check abuse of their usage are still ongoing and will be completed in the third week of January. The other reasons are the delay in the completion of the service centers and labeling of the ambulances. Initially, we heard that these ambulances were being delayed. The commissioning of the ambulances were being delayed. And uh, people didn't see why the government should keep on delaying. People are dying and the ambulances are needed. So the expectation was that when all the ambulances arrived, they will be commissioned. If today we are being told that the president should hold on, for me, my personal view would be the president should commission these ambulances and hand them over to the Ministry of Health. If they have not done their homework by not training people beforehand, it's their cup of tea. Because I heard the news that they were training personnel for the ambulance. Unfortunately, I heard the news also that the, president, the rest are in, so they are ready to be distributed this week, as starting for Monday. So I wonder why the, somebody should call upon the president or the management of the ambulances to uh, be adjourned to a month's time for distribution. The National Ambulance Services, if they are going to use it and they say they need about three weeks, let the, pre the president have the patience because he brought them for the good of the country. With 130 ambulance stations, the entire country has depended on 50 ambulances as 100 others had broken down. A prone distribution of the new ambulances could have averted situations like this. Some patients in critical conditions had to endure much more pain and could have lost their lives. It is however not clear whether the demands of the National Ambulance Service will be met. Joseph Armstrong, TV3, Accra. The ambulances were actually uh, supposed to be uh, commissioned today.
uh, January 6th and not tomorrow, as I said. But earlier, I stepped out to the National Ambulance Service to interact with the Chief Executive Officer of the National Ambulance Service, uh, Professor Ahmed Zakaria, and I first asked him what went into the decision in the history of the country and for, the, for that matter the service, the government has generously also agreed to do insurance for all these vehicles and this is something that has never happened and that insurance itself is a whole process on its own. The other innovation is installation of the tracking devices to improve efficiency and then eventually um, release of the vehicles. Now, the truth of the matter is that once the, the president made pronouncement as regards the commissioning on the 6th of January, it would definitely reactivate the process of everybody expediting action. But obviously, there are some of the processes that you could have internal control over. Others, obviously, are external beyond the, um, the authorities in the country. So, for example, you needed to go through procurement process and get a contractor to do the tracking device. Equally, you needed to do that to get someone who would do the insurance of the vehicles. You understand? Yes. And the other one, it is obviously the training. And the training, we are talking about two different types of training here. Sometimes people tend to think it's the training we do. In terms of service delivery and pre-hospital emergency care services, that is the training we do at the paramedic and emergency care training school. That has been done. And that's why we had about 450. So let's clarify. Your staff, who are supposed to be the paramedics who will uh, use these ambulances, have the requisite national standard training. What you are saying they need is Absolutely. specific to the Absolutely. ambulances so that are specific. coming in. And you know, as part of the contract, normally, for purposes of the warranty, the manufacturer will want to ensure that he gets a qualified person to come and train whoever is going to use the vehicles and the equipment so that they are sure that at least as a start, the training has been, done, has been done on their part. And you cannot violate that clause because if you do, it means that you are losing the warranty. And because of the quantum of vehicles you're buying, obviously you cannot afford to ignore the warranty. And it is that component of training we are talking about. And normally the manufacturers have their own timelines. All efforts to get them can arrive before the stipulated time that they had planned failed because they really, with all good um, intention, wanted to go by that. But unfortunately, it did not happen. Right, so that's uh, Professor Ahmed Zakaria there in an earlier interview with myself at his office. But we're privileged to have in the studio uh, Kweku Sapong Esiedu who is a pharmacist and also a fellow at uh, CDD. And also we have uh, Gabriel Benaku. Gabriel Benaku is chairman of the Coalition of NGOs on Health. Uh, gentlemen, nice to have you here. I'll start with you, uh, Kweku. Well, uh, let me correct that. My name is Kwame. Kwame, yeah, I beg your pardon. Yeah. I apologize. So, no, that's Kwame. Right. Kwame yeah, Sapong yeah. is here. So uh, let me start with you. I mean, you heard the, this is not a full interview, but I reckon that I, I wanted to find out whether there, there were sufficient justification for postponing the commissioning from today to 28th or so, as suggested by the uh, CEO of the National Ambulance Service. Do you think there is sufficient justification? To answer that, the question you need to ask yourself is that 22 days, is it enough to get what needs to be got in place in place? And it's no? To answer that, you need to go back and ask yourself, looking at the letter that was written by Professor Zakaria, what which of the single points in that letter was not known for eight months prior to today? Yeah. And yeah. ask yourself mm. the forward question that if they have taken eight months and not been able to fix this, how do we convince ourselves that they but, can but, do but it? But he explained to me that there were uh, certain aspects of the whole procedure they, they didn't control. Yes, and that's fair. That, you, you might think that's fair, but I'll look at just one single mm. point around the training that you, where you sought clarification yeah. around the training of the paramedics vis-a-vis -vis the training on the use of the equipment. Ambulances these days, all manufacturers who you procure from have simulators. Ambulances these days are like jet fighters. They are like armor tanks, everything, and they do simulation training. So I find it a bit confusing if anyone tells me that the ambulances have to be fiscally present in this country for you to train in this day and age of cloud computing. So that excuse doesn't wash? It doesn't, because I'll, I'll give you an example. If you go on my Facebook wall, I've put examples of the simulators on there. And if you go on any ambulance procurement company's website, they tell you that they've got simulator training. 
So if they have simulated training, then the question I ask myself is, why were we waiting for So what do you suspect is happening here? I, I see a number of issues. I have said that in reality, we don't have enough emergency medical technicians or paramedics as we call them conventionally. Yeah. But 69% of our paramedic population is based in the greater Accra region. So we've got 2,590 roughly, and about 1,600 are based in the greater Accra region. Ashanti region has about 10.1% and the rest of the country shares the rest. So if you go into certain constituencies, especially in Upper East and Upper West, they don't have up to one full-time equivalent of a paramedic. Bear in mind that to run an eight-hour shift for an ambulance, you need two people to drive it. So for me, when I saw that the ambulances, some of them were being paired as pictures began to show, yeah. I felt it made sense from yeah. a running and point of view. Yeah. But then, obviously, because we play politics with everything, the minute the picture started and people started making calls, that was abandoned. So I think those are where they are logistical issues from a human resource standpoint. They are issues as far as the backbone where, for example, if you're on a well... So I'm, there are more issues that more, meet the eye they are and more, that are contained in the explanations that we're giving us. Exactly, because if those explanations were what the reasons were, then obviously... If we've not solved them in eight months, we are not going to solve them in three weeks and right. a day. Mr. Benaku, I asked uh, uh, Professor Zakaria uh, whether he gets the sense that the National Ambulance Service uh, have the full capability in terms of uh, skill and resources to run these new ambulances away from all the furore surrounding whether their commissioning was right or not. Do you get the sense that this National Ambulance Service is really prepared to uh, upskill emergency responses with the provision of these ambulances? Well, the most serious thing which we are worried is confusion everywhere. There's you great, think there's confusion everywhere? There's great confusion. Over explanations? A great confusion everywhere. A country health system cannot be confused, especially emergency health services. Let me give you three instances. But the emergency healthcare services is not only about ambulances. That's uh, what I'm, the, I'm talking the, about. The, I'm not even talking about ambulance. Change. I'm saying emergency health system yeah. cannot be compromised. That's, that's the technical word. We can't compromise emergency health services. One, from day one, did they involve all the people in the planning process to procure the 307 ambulances? No. That's a big no. And that's where the problem started. Now, there is no even an implementation plan after procurement. So it's a disaster there. Now, the third point is that preparedness to redistribute these ambulances, there's no plan. So that's why I'm saying there's total confusion everywhere, from everywhere. And, and, and if you listen to your sister station, I talk about people have helped the president to lie to Ghanaians. How? They told the president everything will be ready before the cease, and today he would have commissioned. And the president was bold and passionate enough to tell you and I, everybody. But in are Ghana, you are you are you really confident that the president didn't know, uh, didn't have much information to the extent? That's that, what I'm saying. Uh, that they helped this, the president. Mm. He relied on his ministers and his officials, and that what they brief him is what he talk about. They meet the press. And you saw how the president was so confident about it. Now, it didn't come on. Mm. So I'm thinking what the president will be explaining to Ghanaians. They having helped the president to tell everybody in Ghana mm. so passionately, very confident and boldly. And I'm sure you were there when the president was announced. Yeah, mm -hmm. He said he was going to make sure by the 6th of January, everybody will make sure, everybody will see that he commissioned this. Mm. So who advised the president? Who advised the president? Kwame, uh, who advised the president is a big question. We, we cannot uh, answer that. But from your, your background and experience in medical emergency care uh, systems and research, uh, where do we move on from here? Primarily, we have to understand that we have erred. And like my colleague said, there has been the dropping of the ball too consistently. And I was with Professor Zakaria on Onye FM this morning, and I did point out to him that I am someone who believes in the fact that errors happen in life. I mean, that's why the word error exists to start with. 
that when you have a but, but I, I, I'm curious, I, I beg your yeah. pardon, but I want to trace where these errors come from. That's where from. I'm going to. Mm, okay. And I'm saying that when you have a procurement system where everything seems to have been fraught in error, from how he's explained it on the EFM, how he explained it to you, yeah. how um, the letter seems to go, yeah. then primarily we need to pull back and say, it looks like this hasn't gone according to plan. My personal opinion is that getting health procurement done by a special initiatives uh, ministry is a non-starter because you need technocratic involvement. You need an understanding. So it should have been done by the Ministry of yes. Health. Yes, and, and for example, if someone is telling me, oh, the ambulances have to get here before I build a technological backbone, I'd say in this day and age of Android technology. It doesn't wash. It doesn't wash because the APIs are available. That's how apps are built for our smartphones, for our um, Androids and our um, iPhones as well. So sometimes it smacks as though we are being made to even deny our own intelligence and start asking ourselves questions about the things we know, the things we read, and mm. other things. And that is where I think we need to start from. We need to all pull a break. The politicians need to realize that it's gotten to a technical point, allow the technicians rather than the politicians to take over and sort this out. Right. Uh, Kwame uh, Sapong is here. Uh, we're grateful for your time. And uh, Gabriel Benaku is also uh, the chairman of the NGOs in health. Uh, Kwame is a uh, pharmacist and a fellow of CDDI.